Hello everyone, this is Jeff and welcome to a new Lacroix tutorial. Today we will take a look at how to upgrade the nano remote of your Prototipo for the Oid Park. As for preparation, there's a few things we need to get ready. Let's just start by listing the tool you will need. First, you will need a screwdriver Phillips number 2 or 1, but the 2 will do a better job. A uh, next driver 2.5 millimeter. It could be either the key or the screwdriver a precision knife, a USB cable that could do data connection. This is the one from the remote and it should work just fine. And some thread locking compound, either medium or high strength. And also a uh, heat guy. You will also be required to get the newest available tool for the fog box. The tool is available at vsc-project.com. Link will be in the description below. Under the tab VSC tool, you need to scroll down the bottom of the page and choose one of the version you want. There's a free version, there's also paid version where all the profit goes to the development of those uh, open source motor controller. Sadly, you might have noticed, but this tool is only available for Windows and Linux. The first step, if you haven't done it already, like I did, is to open up the enclosure. I don't want to get into detail about how to open up the enclosure. It already has been covered in different tutorial. I'll put the link in the description below. You need to unscrew all the screw using the Phillips screwdriver. And if some screws are getting stuck, the best medicine to use is heat. So you have to heat up the screw until the treading compound is getting released. And then you can probably remove the screw much more easier. Once all the screws are removed, we need to lift the enclosure up to 90 degrees and then you'll be able to flip it on its back and lay it down like this so we can access all the electronic. Also, other thing that's really important is make sure that all wheel can spin freely once the electronics are on top of the enclosure because we'll need the wheel to spin later in this tutorial. Now that the enclosure is on its back, we can easily pull out the old receiver. Using a precision knife, we can cut the hot glue and the double-sided tape that are holding the module to the side of the enclosure. Once the module is out of the way, we can clean the surface of the enclosure to make sure that the new receiver will hold in place nicely. As you can see on this one, it's pretty clean, so I'm just gonna leave it like this. So now to disconnect the receiver to the connector, usually we are using a dab of hot glue. So we just can, normally it's pretty straightforward and should work and it's gonna be easy to unplug. But in some case, it could be hard because of the hot glue. So you can use a heat gun and help melt the hot glue while you pull on the cable. So now to install the new receiver. It's pretty simple, it's straightforward. You just have to couple the male and the female. But the most important thing is to make sure that all the cable are following the same order. It's to make sure that the black is with the black, the red is with the red, and the white is with the white. Then you can put the receiver on the side of the enclosure where the last one was. As you might see, in this case, uh, on this receiver, I have a heat shrink. Usually, when you receive the, the OH remote, you will have one of these case which are usually used for the Nazare and Nazare Lone Star and the newest product since the enclosure is a little bit thicker but on the prototypo since the enclosure is thinner we don't have any other choice than using the each shrink that will also be in the box. Once the new receiver is installed it's time to pair the remote. So without opening the remote you just have to press the three button here until the remote flash and then you go on and power up the, your board. You should hear a little beep and a vibration and then the remote will be connect to the receiver. It is now time to bring the computer around 
because we are going to update the firmware into the slave ESC and then the master. We are starting with the slave since once we're going to be plugged into the master, we'll be able to set both of the ESC at the same time. So right now I'm plugging the USB, the micro USB into the slave. Now that the USB is connected to the ESC and the board is powered on, we can open the VSC tool and connect it to the fog box. In the left menu of the tool, we need to go into the connection part. The first step we need to take is to click the refresh icon in the right part of the screen and just after we will click the connect icon. If you still have the stock firmware installed to your board, a message will appear telling you that the firmware inside your controller is too old. We just need to click OK. Back on the left menu, we now need to select the firmware tab. Inside the firmware tab, we will select 410, 411 and 412 as the hardware version and VSC default.bin as the firmware. We can go now in the bottom of the firmware screen and click update firmware on the VSC, on the connect VSC. Now we need to wait a few seconds after the firmware has been loaded into the fog box and verify the hardware version is 4.10 and the firmware is equivalent to the latest version of the VSC tool. Here we have 3.62. If everything is all right, we can click in on the disconnect icon located in the top right menu and shut down the board. We are now ready to change the USB from the slave to the master and repeat all the previous steps in order to update the firmware inside the controller. I will just do all the steps quickly. Once the firmware has been updated, it's finally time to work on the motor detection and remote calibration. For those two steps, we will use the wizard tool, which will update the settings for both ESC at the same time. In the left menu, we need to select the tab Welcome and Wizard. Then there will be three options for us to choose from. The first, the one, the first one we want to select is Setup Motor FOC, which will run motor detection and load the setting for the battery and motor. We just have to follow the instruction. At first, we need to select the motor, which is a medium out runner. Then we can click next. A warning should appear to warn us, to warn people if they have chosen the wrong motor, but in our case, we are all right and can click yes without much hesitation. The second part, is configuring the battery. This setting will vary if you have the DSS 50 plus or the DSS 60. For the DSS 50 plus, the number of cell in series is five and the battery capacity is equal to 21.2 amp hour. And for the DSS 60, the number of cell in series is six and the battery capacity is 18 amp hour. All the detail will be in the description. The the third part is to configure the setup of your board. On the motor pulley, if you still have the stock one, the value will be 20. If you have ch ever changed, you just need to enter the number of teeth of the pulley you have put in. Same for the wheel pulley, which are 62 stock. And if you have changed them, you need to change a new uh, number of, of teeth. The wheel di diameter for the Innova tire, which were the stock tire, is 175 millimeter. But if you have upgraded them, you just have to enter the new diameter of the wheel you have. Prior to click on run motor detection, we just want to make sure that the wheel and motor on the board are free to roll because once we click run motor detection, those will spin. Now we can safely click on run detection. 
Both motors should make some weird noise and spin. This step will probably take a good 20 to 30 seconds. Once it's all over, we can click finish. Before doing the calibration of the remote, we want to validate the settings for the motor. On the left menu, under motor settings, we will click on the tab general. And on the top of the screen, we will go in the tab current. As we can see, the battery current is set to 99 amp, which is a little bit too high. We need to change the value to 35. And then on the right, in the menu, we click on right motor configuration. We also have to do the same thing for slave fog box. So still on the menu at your right, we will select the last icon, which is can, with a little right arrow underneath. The button should let green and stay green. Now we go back to the menu and read motor configuration. And once we click on it, it should be able to read the data on the slave ESC. As you can see, the battery current went back to 99 amp. We will, we will make the same change as we did on the master and put the current down to 35. Then, back on the right menu, we'll hit the right button again. So once it's done, we can now go back to the can button and click on it. It should revert back to its gray color. We are now ready for the remote calibration. Back on the left menu, in the tab Welcome and Wizard, on the screen we can now select Setup Input, which is the third choice. On the first pop-up that will appear, we just need to click on the Next button. Then we can select this VSC, since the remote is plugged on this ESC. Then again, Next. As for the type of input, we are using a PPM input like conventional RC receiver. Next. Now for mapping the receiver. This is pretty simple. We just need to go full throttle and then full brake on the remote and click the apply button on the screen. Once it's done, we can click next. On the general screen, we just need to change the control type to Current, no reverse, with break. Finally click next and then finish on the next screen. Everything is now set up and calibrate. The only thing left is to put back the enclosure. For this I highly suggest to look back at Alex's video which should guide you in more detail on how to reassemble the screw and the torque required to put back the enclosure. Also, don't forget to put some thread locking compound on your screw. For the rest, enjoy your ride and be safe.